What up, everybody? <laughs> it's May 8th. We're coming to you live from New Jersey, from Berlin, soon to be New York, is New Jersey area. Tata yeah. and Josh, we're here to tell you all the latest news about crypto. What's up, everybody? How's it going? How's it going, Josh? Sup, 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 y'all. Oh, um, <laughs> so, uh, what's going on? You're coming to New York. Uh, it's yeah. a really big week here. It's so wait, today's May 8th. Starting on Thursday, I've got action. I've got a panel slash a performance on Thursday night. There's like stuff on Friday. I've got a thing in Columbia, but then really all the blockchain stuff happens with the women on the blockchain event in, um, in Williamsburg on Sunday for mother's day. Nice. And then apparently there's a list of 140 parties. I am waiting for it to be delivered to me and we will be tearing up the town, making friends and talking about the good, wonderful things that Bitcoin and blockchain can do for you. So you're coming. Yeah. That's cool. That's very unusual. Um, what made you decide to do this? All those meetings that you have set up? Yeah, all the meetings. Uh, got plenty of meetings in, in New York. And, and and also to actually see my good friend face to face, Tatiana. And, I wasn't uh, expecting know, that, but I like that. That's a good yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah. And uh, no, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, consensus, the, the actual event is is one event, but you know, they, they I am finding them a little bit too ridiculously expensive. I mean, come off it, guys. Lower your ticket prices. Please, just whatever. Stop being such tools. 3000 bucks a ticket. What do you think? Anyway, around that event, there is a massive, you know, blockchain week, basically. Uh, crypto week in New York. And even though New York has slapped everyone with the uh, bit license in New York, still the biggest uh, events in the world pretty much happened in new york and this is this week so very very excited this is the biggest event of the year i mean i don't know if you can really say that i consider uh, la bitconf to be my favorite conf of the year yeah yeah that but is this the biggest American. is this the most I, I, impactful oh it kind of feels so gross consensus is always a little bit like shilly uh, you know a Not shilly, but just stiff and banky yeah, yeah and lame like i and nobody knows how to get in like i've heard so many people complaining you know how do you get a speaking slot is it yeah. pay to play? And and look, I get it. Conferences have pay to play, and that makes sense. They got to open the doors. But I think that was one of the, the the things originally that gave me the impression that it's chilly. Oh, and the three thousand dollar price ticket. Um, yeah, look, I've been to some events where it's just chillville. Basically, you go there, and or every single speaker is just chilling their their coin or their product or their ICO, and it's the most boring thing ever. Nothing inspirational. Nothing educational just people trying to sell you stuff and it's it's just like being in a massive ad and then paying for it which is pretty awful so um but uh actually i was just at amsterdam at changes conference and, who is that uh, what's that conference about well chain you know it's got the word chain in it and it's changes so that was uh kind of cool but uh it's about blockchain bitcoin crypto uh pivx was there um uh, bitpay bitbay was there um there was a few like a lot of these sort of alternative currencies. I like Amsterdam. Amsterdam. It's a very cool town. I mean, not for the obvious reasons, like, oh, I like Amsterdam, like whatever. Everybody likes Amsterdam for that. But I actually really like the the aesthetic yeah. of um of everything. I thought culturally it's cool. I do like the cafes because they're a little bit more of a chill social environment than um it's a very alcohol. libertarian libertarian minded city, you know, of Europe actually. Like um prostitution is very always been legal. Oh really? Drugs I didn't always... I forgot about that. Yeah, drugs have always been legal. You know, as long as you don't harm anyone else, they're they're good with it, pretty much. So it's it's really been this uh, sort of uh, you know this this torch of liberty you know, within Europe all through the ages. And uh, a lot of trade, a lot of art has come out of there. Of course, Van Gogh is one example, but a lot of artists used to meet there because it's such a scenic place. It's so beautiful. I couldn't agree more. It really is, and and I like that. Uh... There's, you know, that bike culture. I don't like getting run over by the bicycles. I feel like that is 100% very likely to happen. Probably. Can. Um, Yeah. But I, I still like it. I'm like, ooh, the bicycles. Oh, uh, yeah. And it, it is really unreal seeing the amount of bikes. It's, it's fantastic. It's like China in the 80s. It's amazing. So, um, so, but yeah, anyway, we were at the conference and we launched, uh, we, Voltoro, I, I'm the CEO of Voltoro, the Bitcoin gold exchange. We were the first exchange in the world to offer a full allocated gold pair against Bitcoin. So people didn't have- What to does trade. that mean for like people that don't know what that means? So if you trade into USD on a trading platform like GDAX or Kraken or Bitstamp or anywhere else, 
you've got an order book and you're trading against United States dollars or euros. Well, um, on Voltori, you trade against gold that is in your name as your property, physical bullion that's sitting in a private voting facility in Switzerland, fully insured and fully audited. And that means if we go broke as a startup, because you don't want to trust startups with your money, it's just, you know, you know, most startups fail. Not that we're failing, we're doing very well, but it was one of the things we wanted to stop. So um, if, if anything happens to us, liquidators can't come in and take our client's money because it's sitting not in our books, it's our client's name as their property sitting in a high security voting facility. And, it, you know, we don't have a bank because it's fully bank independent. So, um, you know, that's the other thing. If you're using a normal exchange, if the bank goes broke or runs off with the funds or just closes the account, uh, a lot of the funds can be lost like that with standard exchanges. So does that happen a lot? The the closing of the account, like how much is that going yeah. on? It happens. Is that quite just a lot. euro thing, or is it you know just U.S. or is that everywhere? No, it's everywhere. It happens all the time. Yeah, they they just will just shut your account uh, and uh, as an exchange, and then you you have to like. And a lot of exchanges try to hide it. You know, they they'll then try to cover it, but then they can spiral into a Ponzi scheme as they're trying to get more people in to cover losses which they will eventually get back, but it could take years wow. um, when, it, when a bank freezes. So you have this massive counterparty risk. And if the bank goes fully broke uh, in the meantime, then you've definitely lost your money. So with, with gold, you don't have that. So, um, but anyway, so we were the first to launch a gold pair. And uh, then we were the first to uh, actually launch uh, the, the Glass Books protocol, which is a protocol we invented in-house uh, to have full transparency of the exchange. So anyone can always verify that we're fully above reserve. And we took a lot of inspiration from the blockchain. Um, and, uh, you know, I can go into how that works some other day, but it's really, really cool. And now, and what we launched at Changes was really, I'm, I was super proud, Tatiana. Like we, we are officially the first major exchange to accept Lightning Network deposits, meaning that um, you don't have to wait for six confirmations anymore. You send a payment and it's there instantly. Uh, using the Lightning Network, and it's super fun to use. It's so Ooh, cool. that's fun. Yeah, yeah, I had a friend of mine who was showing me how quick it was working, and that was pretty impressive. Yeah, you know, when I you really said feel like it, it's important to me, right? I don't know. I guess I don't really need things to happen that instantly, but certainly if you're trading and stuff. Well, yeah, but also if you're buying a coffee, um, you know, if you bought a coffee in December, it would cost you thirty, you know, thirty dollars, forty dollars. Whereas the Lightning yeah. Network. You pay for one time a, an on-chain transaction, on-chain transaction, and then from then on, you're paying only minuscule fees because you're not touching the actual blockchain. You're just sending um, these these uh, bitcoins within smart contracts around, and then you settle every you know six months or something like that onto the actual blockchain. So, mm -hmm. actually, we should talk about every that. Every six months, yeah. Okay, first of all, we have time. Uh, we've got Kevin, but I don't see him back there. And and we've I wanted to talk about Voltoro today, uh, um, which we haven't had a chance to talk about. So yeah, get into it. We've got a little yeah. bit of time. So the Lightning Network, what it basically allows, it's kind of like a bar tab. Um, so in, you know, instead of paying for a drink every time you go to the barman and get your drink, you open up a tab and and you can drink all night long and then just have one payment at the end. So the blockchain doesn't get filled up. You're just doing one payment. Um, but there's problems with the bar tab, right? The barman has to trust me that I'm not going to just head out the door halfway through the night and say ciao uh, without ch saying ciao. And I have to trust the barman that he's not putting extra drinks as I get drunker and drunker and drunker. And so the Lightning Network has solved these sorts of problems uh, programmatically or mathematically um, in a trustless manner. And it's just such an elegant solution. There are still problems and there is a lot of FUD out there trying to discredit it. And um, basically it changes. I went through a lot of the problems that people have with it and talked about each one and then launched the fact that we were the first um, major exchange to accept Lightning Network deposits in the world. So super stoked. In the world. That in always world. sounds good. I like having yeah. it in the world when I say things. Makes I know. Feel. Yeah. 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 In the universe. I don't know if we can say that. Yeah, we can. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. On the first artist coin in the universe, you're the first exchange to accept lightning. Boom. Yeah. We're just trailblazing. I like it. Yeah, we're living on the edge. Yeah. Um. So do you have anything else to tell us about Voltoro now that this has been implemented? Any other action? We never talk um, about Voltoro. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know. I know. Yeah, break it we'll out. We'll bring yeah, Kevin but... on in a couple minutes. But uh, um, yeah, I'm just curious. 
Yeah. Anything so else? Or should we should we do my announcement? Should we talk about our sponsors? Like, what are we supposed to do? Well, just before we do, um, we uh, are just uh, we're we're rebuilding Voltoro from the ground up to have more training pairs. So we're going to have silver, platinum, palladium. We're going to have other cryptos as well. Um, so it'll be really interesting to have a price discovery system not based on fiat because a lot of these coins are basically getting their price from fiat, which what the hell are we doing? We, we got into crypto to get away from fiat and yet we're pricing everything against fiat. So uh, what Voltoro aims to do is give give Bitcoin a price against gold. Yeah, but who thinks like that? I don't think like that. Maybe other people do. I yeah, feel like, but- and it's good to shift everybody's thinking. That just sounds hard. <laughs> it is very like, hard. I, can't just, I would rather just do it to dollars. Sorry. Well, I'm a bad libertarian. Uh, uh, our, our guest will definitely tell us about that. Um, uh, all right. Cool. Well, wait. Yeah. Let's talk um, about So let, should, we, should we do the guest? Should we play the new song? Should we? Well, let's play your new song as a. As a as all right, a cool. Well, first, before we do, let's talk about our sponsors. Uh, I want to make sure that we give a shout out to my friend Kirk over at thebitcoincpa.com. Yes. Kicking A and taking names out in PA, Pennsylvania, for those of you that are not familiar with the uh, New York uh, metropolitan area. Apparently, everything is defined by New York, not even its own area. Anywho, um, yeah. Get your taxes done. Don't don't try and screw over the man. You're never going to get away with it. Have uh, have Kirk teach you teach you the ways. Uh, yeah. And I and then we've got Crypto Compare. I love those guys. Yeah. We're always talking about them because they've got the peg. Are they yeah. excited about your news? Did they tell anyone? They've got really good news coming out of their Twitter. Uh, they've got, you know, daily things. Shoot, I haven't retweeted them in a while. But yeah, anywho, yeah. everybody check out Crypto Compare. They're, they're the people website. that will help with this transition because you can compare your crypto against gold. So you can say, oh, I've, instead of saying, I've got, you know, this many thousands of dollars worth of crypto, you can say, I've got this many, you know, kilos of gold or grams of gold. I don't know, man. You're not going to sell me on that last part. I just like, I'm like, are you kidding me? It's hard enough to understand a lot of the things that happen in cryptocurrency. I'm hey, not sure I need to deal with that one. You, but someone in Venezuela would definitely not want to compare against the Bolivia because it's like, it's. But they would totally... want to go against the dollar too. But this is why we have the petrodollar. Everybody's all pissed. And now we got all these problems with China and stuff. Oh, yeah. China. Russia just trying to cut us out, those bastards. <laughs> We're number one. I'm just kidding. Um, Sovereign okay. tech. Sovereign Tech. Okay, yeah. What's up with yeah. Ryan? I haven't seen him in a while, but he's still cool. Kicking Sovereign A and taking Tech. names. Check it out. Great podcast. See how lady like I am? I don't even say ASS. I say kicking A. Yeah, kicking A. Um, um, all right, yeah. enough of this. We've we've talked enough about all these people. Oh, wait, I want to give a shout out to, uh, to Andreas and the Bob Meetup Group and Let's Talk Bitcoin and Pamela Morgan and everybody out in Chicago last week. Um, I had such an awesome time and they were, we had such a magical um, trip. So I just want to say, you know, thanks again. And uh, everybody should check out what Andreas is up to. Uh, let's do this song. Or should we leave the song for the end? Should we have Kevin let's come leave on? The song for the end. Yeah, let's, let's leave let's... the song for the end. It'll be like outro music. People yeah. will be like, oh, that was so beautiful. And they'll like cry and stuff. Yeah, All right. Yeah. So we're bringing up the man with the plan or maybe not because the government they almost got him and then they released him it's like such a crazy story uh yeah. let's bring up kevin kevin come on up uh i don't know i think you have to unmute yourself yeah if you there, there we go little... hey oh. kevin how's it going nice to see you hi nice to see you great hey kevin how do i, I... say your last name Ines. Ines. yes oh okay cool interesting Ines. Yeah, I'm glad we were able to connect <laughs> Yeah, it was nice to see you in Toronto, Tatiana. That was Indeed. cool. Yes, it was very nice to be up in Toronto. I really like Sonny Ray, and his event was super cool. So I hope that people uh, go to those. And then I also went to Distributed Markets. I can't, like, name st- – now I'm just getting into trouble because I love all the different organizers for different reasons. I had a really nice uh, run there for a minute. Um, but, yeah, mm-hmm. so uh, did you enjoy the conference? I did. I was just there in the evening, but it was very – packed with a lot of information, some very interesting speakers uh, that evening. Cool. And uh, yeah, and they had a nice uh, spread of food there also as part of that. I didn't even know. Oh, don't good. talk to me about food. I'm hungry. I haven't been eating lately and it's like really, <laughs> it's good because, you know, then you get like beach body ready, but it's bad because then you're like, oh, I need food. And then you just, but actually you can just not eat and, and nothing really happens to you. Eventually you start to fall apart. And I'm not saying people should do that, but I'm just saying like, 
you'd be surprised at how long you can go without eating. Hey, so it's what you do the next few years, you'll be happy in 10 that you've taken care of your health. There you go. But ladies, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you, Kevin, because we have an, a phenomenal guest here on the show. And of course, we always have phenomenal guests. So you're among great, uh, in, in great presence. Um, you know, in 2009, Satoshi wrote a white paper, and in that white, and and then he released the Genesis block. And within that Genesis block, uh, Satoshi mentioned that the banks uh, are in for another bailout. But just as he wrote that, he could have written something like, um, "The ridiculous charge of counterfeit held in a county jail for 23 months without trial until his release." So. Uh, Kevin, because this is a man who has fought for liberty in the um, in in terms of currency. Um, he is uh, it, it worked very very strongly in having a metals backed liberty dollar. Um, and if I got any of that wrong, let me know, Kevin. Yeah, I think we should let Kevin. Kevin, give us your life story. People, inquiring minds want to know. Okay, so. Uh I was a coin collector way back when I was a kid and uh, been fascinated by its value. And if you hold on to them, they have a collector's value also. And so, uh, um, you know, I, I heard about different things going on with the banks while I was li living in Europe. And, uh, but I didn't know what to do about it. I taught, you know, gave lectures on economics and social philosophy and things like this um, for a number of years and teaching yoga and meditation too. And so I was trying to find some peaceful way to make some change that would be good for the entire society and bring more integrity back to our interactions um, financially, especially in light of what the banks had been doing for the last hundred years. Mm -hmm. And uh, then someone dropped a one ounce piece of silver in my hand. And I went, what is that? I said, wow, is that ever cool? And this is what they look like. It was a Liberty dollar. Oh, cool. I go, what is this? And they said, it's new currency. It's new money. Really? Tell me about it. And so I went on to, to learn more and more about it and eventually became a regional currency officer with the idea of bringing a voluntary currency into distribution that wouldn't go to the banks because we don't want it to go to banks. We want it to stay in the commu community. Every time money changes between small businesses, another small business uh, who puts more money back in the community benefits, right? And so I built that up after a while. Oh, and but before I even started, I went to the police and told them what I was doing because I didn't want to have any wrong uh, understanding of what I was trying to promote here. And Jeez, they- please. Yeah, I went. Out, I had an interview with the main guy who was the uh, head of the Asheville Police Department, uh, formerly the police chief, but then he was a relations officer. And at the same time, he invited somebody from the Better Business Bureau. Cool. So I talked about what I had done, uh, what I was going to do, and they said, uh, "Well, I already checked with the Secret Service. Uh, we can't enjoy it, uh, or I, we can't uh, endorse what you're doing." But I checked with the Secret Service, and they said. You're not breaking any law, so you know, go ahead. And I said, well, I just wanted to make sure and uh, that there wasn't any misunderstanding. Because if there is, you can come back to me and say, hey, I'm happy to uh, explain things. And so after that, I went to the different uh, police departments and um, precincts around the Asheville area. Went to the uh, Buncombe County Sheriff's Office and the um, Chief Deputy. I. I couldn't get an interview with the sheriff himself, but the chief deputy said, wow, you know, in, in 2000, what was it, 1984, I cashed in my silver and made a bunch of money. I think this is a great idea. So every policeman after that, I would drop them in my hand and said, have you read your circular? Oh, this is what they look like. Okay. So it was very strange for me when later on we have an announcement that from the US Mint, that the use of the Liberty dollar as legal tender, now words are important in legal matters, as legal tender can land you five years in jail and a $10,000 fine. Well, that's not the complete information. Yes, 
You can if you promote it as legal tender, but this is lawful money, as we said, according to the Constitution, which says that you're supposed to have only silver and gold as a means of transactions, honest transactions between people. And the Federal Reserve notes are not, according to the Constitution, actually legal. Or they're, they're not lawful. They're legal according to the statutes, but they're not according to the Constitution. Wow. So, uh, yeah, after a while, you know, um, that was very strange. So we filed a lawsuit against them uh, for slander and libel because they were not uh, telling the whole story. They were misleading the public as to what we were doing. Um, and in the meantime, I was on local radio and TV, even before that and after that, telling my story, what's going on, and had as many as 100 business in Asheville, businesses in Asheville area that were promoting the currency. And so the local, uh, a local reporter with a um, newspaper asked the US Minute, uh, Mint uh, spokesperson, what's going on here? I said, well, the use of the Liberty dollar, you know, it's there's they claim that there's if it, 60 or 20 million dollars in circulation if it was a small amount we no problem but 20 million dollars oh is that the way law works yeah if it's a small amount it's legal and if it's a lot it's illegal right they just didn't want the competition yeah so later on you know we were moving towards having a, a lawsuit against them and they actually in 2007 Confisc gave it almost two tons of silver, gold, platinum, and copper pieces with Ron Paul's face on it, claiming they were counterfeit. He's not even dead yet, right? He wasn't dead then either. Aren't dead people supposed to be on coins? And how would someone confuse the face of Ron Paul on a piece with the regular currency that's used every day? Come on. Wasn't their main, complaint, their main complaint was the, the use of the word dollar, right? But Is there's Disney right? dollars. Yeah. Interesting. There's Disney dollars and there's all kinds of other types of dollars. Yeah. I don't see Disney being sued. Of course, they're very much in bed with the government, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this is so, the this is one of the main reasons why we haven't issued a gold backed crypto yet. It's because the governments just don't like the competition. It's the thing is with crypt cryptocurrency, they just don't have a, the option to shut it down. It, it's just really, really hard. And why we deal in full allocated gold because every user is its own account. Uh, they, they, whereas when you have a, a currency that's backed by gold, you have to allocate it to the one company so they can come and shut down that one account and then it's done. But uh, being able to have uh, uh, totally separate accounts is, is is fantastic. And I think... We are really living because at the end of the day, for me, it's about competition, competition as currencies, allowing the people to decide what is currency and not forcing it on people, not forcing it. And if I want to use a silver dollar, I should be able to use a silver dollar to trade. Well, with. one of the beauties of this is that it ended up being about $60 million in circulation with Liberty Dollar, which is less than a drop in the proverbial That's bucket. I mean, really nothing, but, no. but all those silver pieces are still in circulation. Wow. People are still using them because it's not centralized. It's all decentralized. And that's the beauty of the Bitcoin system. Now, yeah. any Bitcoin process, it'd be good for people to also have the physical gold and silver definitely, if definitely. they wanted it, right? And uh, yeah, then it's got some integrity. It's actually countable. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, so we ran this course for a while and then um, we filed a lawsuit against them, slander and libel, as I mentioned. And uh, the government tried to dis have our case dismissed by the judge and the judge refused. So they thought, what are we going to do now? We were moving against them to have a judicial uh, decision about the Liberty dollar. And that's when they slapped us with a criminal lawsuit. Well, criminal lawsuits, have to be done first before any civil matters are heard. So that effectively shut down the company. They confiscated their stuff. I was arrested. There was three others that were arrested. The main the main guy they wanted was the the founder. And uh, so, uh, was yeah. This, was this on a federal arrest or was it? Uh, oh yeah, counterfeiting is federal. But you know what? Why is the F was the FBI involved? The Secret Service normally does the uh, arrests for counterfeiting. It's like. Yeah. Well, who, 
where did they come from? Right? Yeah. They're not supposed to be. And I, I talked to the, uh, the sheriff afterwards because actually sheriffs have the op opportunity to kick out the FBI from their um, county if they're oh, not really doing not. what they're supposed to. Oh, yes. The, he's the top law enforcement official in, any, in the counties. And uh, I talked to him and he said, it wasn't me. It was the FBI. Yeah, come on. You could have done something. But he didn't because that's free investigative work, you know, and, and they're not going to go against the feds. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's such an amazing contradiction. And a, so, what happened then? Uh, you got arrested uh, for you know creating a peaceful currency that really didn't hurt anybody. Uh, what happened? What happened now? Well, there's. A, I was sitting. <laughs> County jail. It wasn't prison. Prison would have been nice. A lot more services. County jail. There's nothing going on. Um, so we're waiting. You know. So where's discovery? Like, what is? What have you got? What's your evidence? And so it was going on. One week, two weeks, a month, two months, three months. What's going on? Oh, the FBI gave the discovery all the evidence that they said they had against me, and it was in a digital format that was proprietary to the FBI. 4.2 million pages of documents that it'd have to be opened up, looked at, and then go on to the next with no search feature. So it would have taken 16,000 attorney hours by a public defender, they don't have the budget, to be able to go through all of that. So <laughs> it took so you rot in prison. a long time. Huh? You, you rot in county jail for because they don't have the technology to search a document. Well, the FBI is the te technology, but it's proprietary to them, and they're not going to give it to the public defender's office. Come oh, on. So, so after, I think it was after 18 months or something, 14 months, the public defender's office finally got money given to them. I think it would cost about $70,000 to put the whole thing up on the cloud, some new software, and then it was searchable. And... They didn't have anything. It was all stuff taken out of context. There was a couple of undercover agents that were involved. And I was very particular. Every question I answered, I answered in a context uh, about what their question was and what I was doing. So they didn't have anything. So and can so, you sue for lost time for such a nonsense? I mean, it seems absurd. Well, yeah, lost time and wages and, you know, being able yeah. to enjoy life, but no attorney is going to take on the Fed. Was there, uh, I would, would not be able to afford them unless somebody's willing to help me out. And, uh, we, uh, you know, because I, I had asked a number of attorneys, uh, federal attorneys, whether they would take the case on contingency, which is you pay them when you win, but they weren't willing to take it. So I was stymied that, you know, I'd have to do it myself. And that's a whole other set of procedures involved with federal lawsuits, you know, against yeah. suing the Fed. So, uh, so you know, yeah. At the end, uh, they, I was not interesting for them after they convicted uh, Bernard von Nothaus, the the founder of the company. Um, What's happened by some to him? Crazy journey. I what think he to was him? in like Ross's prison for a minute in New York. No, I think that they had him there. I think the Liberty Dollar guy was like in the MCC for a minute. I don't remember why that at, sounded familiar to me, though, when that happened. Um, he was, there was a bond violation, apparently, and he was in for a week. But actually, the only sentencing that he got was three months house arrest and three years probation, Man, which was chip. shortened. And they, which was shortened to one year. I mean, I'm glad that he didn't get in that much trouble, but it sounds like you were in jail longer than him. That's crazy. You're not inside of your company. I know. I had, well, yeah, it was nutty because they wanted to use, see, because it's conspiracy, right? Uh, their claim. So if they could lean on me, get me to plea to something, lie against myself, then it, they'd have an easy time at trial. Right. Oh, well, your co-conspirator, you know, admitted this. So what ha that happened there as far as the plea thing is that, oh, first off, in his face is whatever, 20 years in jail, you know, you know, headlines in the newspaper. And then after I was in for six months, they offered me 
14 months. Wow. Not bad. 14 months. But I'd still be lying. I didn't intentionally want to defraud anybody, and they know it. So after another two months, in other words, eight months, they offered me a six-month plea. I said, you know what? I'd still be lying. I'd have a felony. You know, mm. I'd be kicked out of the country immediately. So I stuck it out, you know. But they still didn't let me go, go out on bond because I'd be a flight risk. Wait a minute. I want to go to trial. And I could get out on a plea bargain. So why would I flee to Canada when I had an opportunity to win the case, you know, or yeah, there's far too much plea logic. and get, leave Canada anyways? <laughs> far, far too much logic for a government, Kevin. You, you, you know, yeah. So when it came to the end after they convicted uh, Bernard von Nauthaus, the, my, the private detective who, or the an investigator who was working with the, um, with the, um, public defender's office came to me and, and said, will you take anything? <laughs> I go, yeah, if I'm not going to lie about it. So I said, well, maybe there was uh, some IRS issue or something, you know, I was like, I, I didn't know what, what am I supposed to plead to that? You know, they want to have some kind of conviction. So that's when they end up offering me something that would not get me deported because I'm Canadian fighting for the U S constitution and real money. Um, <laughs> They offered me a $300 fine, a petty offense. It's a federal parking ticket. Oh, my goodness. No, um, uh, no um, searchable record. If you went on and searched my record, I have no, because a petty offense is not what they call moral turpitude. It's, doesn't, it's unintentional, you know. Well, of course. It was always unintentional, but still, I mean, they took away a couple of years of your life. Jesus Christ. How yeah. did you recover from all that? What happened? Well, well, the important thing mm -hmm. for anybody you talk to who's been in jail is not to get bitter. Mm -hmm. You know, that could eat you up. So I took it as, you know, I just started getting more into my meditation, doing meditation four times a day, yoga twice a day, working out reading, studying, memorizing poetry, whatever to keep my mind, you know, soft and not mean and bitter. And uh, and writing, I had this was uh, mail to jail was, was going on then, and I think it still is, and that was beautiful. People wrote me letters from all over the country, and donations would come to help me out with, with uh, commissary. And yeah, so that's what helped. And then uh, as soon as I got out, it's like, I want to see my peeps. So where do they go? Pork fest. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Pork fest and other places too to see the people that have been supporting, you know, what I've been doing. Is wow, oh, Kevin, what you doing? Yeah, yeah. So that was really sweet. And then I did that interview uh, at Pork Fest that's on um, Silver Circle, the movie. They yeah. did a very nice interview. Yeah. Cool. Right. And uh, I liked what they do. They have that Silver Circle themselves. That's a. Um, a different way of doing things, you know? Yeah. But, uh, and yeah, you just keep going, you know, take it in stride and use it as a, okay, when am I going to get uh, free lunch and dinner <laughs> and, and my laundry done? And I just have to chill out and keep my heart and mind soft, you know, and, and keep going. Hmm. Yeah. Well, so. Like yeah. So, Full story. So, yeah. Well, uh, just quickly, that what what was the actual charge for the firm? What what actually brought? Why did they? Why were they interested in shutting Liberty Dollar down in the first place? Uh, how did they start the process of having their panties in the wad? You mean? Yeah, like what, what what got them? What who you know in the Silk Road case, you had you know Chuck Schumer get his get the bee in his bonnet. You, you know what? Who who did you pee, pee off? Uh, my guess is that um, it happened shortly after I got front page news in the local paper that I was promoting local currency, right? And it continued. The article continued in the paper. Hmm. Shortly after that. I got a visit from someone who I later found out was an undercover agent. And I also know that 
not far from Asheville, a former Federal Reserve chairman lives there or has a summer home. And my guess is that he got wind of this. What's this going on? And decided, you know, because why Asheville, right? Austin, Texas was a much bigger thing going on there. They had over 300 businesses. Um, and so it was shortly after that, that this undercover agent was there and they, they told the FBI, hey, probably what's going on and I don't like it. See what you can do. See if you can dig up some dirt with them. Uh, and, uh, and, and Bernard uh, was pretty feisty. The Bernard von Nothaus, pretty feisty. And if you read some of the things that he said about the Fed, it's uh, no holds barred. You know, I was more like, hey, FBI agents have to eat too. You know, what's going to happen when your currency doesn't mean squat, doesn't buy anything? You'd have to have something real because people are, don't trust the Federal Reserve notes anymore. And it's happened before, you know, not worth a continental, you know. Back in the time of the, uh, when the U.S. was uh, under Lincoln, was printing all kinds of money, and then you couldn't couldn't buy anything with it, you know, hyperinflation. And now we've got hyper digits. So, anyway, so I was less confrontational that way, and um, and Bernard was not pulling hold it, pulling back, and was not scared by the U.S. Mint's warning that um, use of it could land you in jail. There was one guy who was like on the executive council. He quit. As soon as that warning came out, he saw the writing on the wall. He didn't want any part of it. And so did another person who was um, one, on the executive council. He quit as well as soon as the heat started coming up. But uh, hey, the damage or the whatever, I am was out there. I'm going to stick it out and see if we uh, can win this. And see, this this is one of the reasons a lot of people ask as well, why don't you make gold-backed uh, crypto? And, and And one of the reasons is that that it is illegal to mint your own currency in a lot of countries. The governments just don't like competition. And that is why Satoshi Nakamoto created a decentralized cryptocurrency. There's no central issuance there. And that's that's a really interesting thing. You, you're going for rare numbers um, instead of a rare metal. and um, But they work so well together. And it's funny, it's taken a long time for a lot of uh, metal uh, and gold bugs to actually come across to the crypto side, and, it's, and and but a lot of the crypto people are old school gold bugs. They understand the concepts of scarcity and why that's important. And not only scarcity, because you don't want something to be scarce that no one can have access to it, because why would you want money scarce? But you want it divisible. And that is really a big key to a good currency. Mm -hmm. You want it divisible so that everyone can have some, except it holds its value. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I mean, the, the Liberty Dollar had a lot of those different ideas. Like they had also um, certificates. This is a $20 certificate, right? Would have backed by silver on deposit. With a, By the way, the very same mint that makes the U.S. mint pieces, that mint made ours too. Oh, really? And somehow, and somehow they never testified. I found yeah. that very suspicious. And yeah. here's a $1. There's, this, this is a $1 piece. Wow. Right? So we had ones, fives, twenties, fifties, hundreds, you know, all hundred percent backed, you know, That's and, better. but here's another idea. And this is, uh, from Floyd, Virginia. It's a Floydian script. Oh, wow. Floydian script. I mean, <laughs> so this is backed by labor, you know, and there's people that have like uh, currencies that are backed by labor <laughs> or, Floydian. Yeah, and then there was the idea for a while of using um, mercury dimes, right? huh? Because they still buy a gallon of gas, one dime, just like before, because silver's gone up, and so is gas prices. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Port sound money and buy a gallon of gas for a dime, approximately. Yeah. And I like the other guys. What was this going on in New Hampshire? Also, the Shire silver strips, right? Put it in a card, and they can have various thicknesses, right? All hundred percent, you know, ninety nine point nine fine silver, right? That's what it looks like on the back. So there's all kinds of ideas, but the main thing is to use it and make it so popular that it would be detrimental to a community for it not to be there. And that's what I I'd be interested in doing more of, and that is having some average businesses, coffee shops, gas stations, you know, 
hair salons, whatever, that are used nails, right? The ladies are always doing their nails, right? And uh, so places like that to accept the yeah. Bitcoin, silver back Bitcoin or gold yeah. would be very cool. Be you very know, cool. so that if you take it away, hey, don't take it away. We're thriving with this currency. And, yeah. and we don't know what the price of the US dollar is going to be tomorrow. See, the, the, I think it's not only the price, though. Um, and and I, I'd like to cover this quickly for, for the folks at home, because this is something that constantly gets overlooked. Um, why Bitcoin or, or gold and silver, why these asset-based currencies are so important is because every dollar that is in circulation is actually lent into existence with interest that doesn't exist. So yeah. Yeah. Let, let's boil it down. Let, 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 let's say there's a little desert island with three people living on it. Um, and and uh, let's say it's, it's Tatiana, uh, me, and Kevin. Now, uh, all of a sudden, I wake up and I say, right, I've invented this new thing called money. And I convince Kevin here to, to, you know, to accept my new money. And you, and you think, oh, well, you know, I'm a bit tired of just trading chickens with coconuts because I don't need any more chicken. I, I've become vegetarian, but that's all Tatiana has. Um uh, and and so you say, oh, and you're sold on this currency stuff. And you say, well, how do how do I get this first uh, dollar? We'll call it. How do I get this first dollar? Uh, Kevin asked me, and I'll say, well, you have to borrow it from me. Uh, Kevin, you'll, you'll say, well, well okay. okay, and 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 then I say, well, you have to give me back for you borrow ten dollars. You have to give me back twelve. And yeah, you know, but hang on a minute. Kevin says, how can I pay you back twelve if the, this island only has ten? I've borrowed the first ten, and there is only ten. I said, well, you have to wait for Tatiana to borrow 10 as well. And you do a little bit of trade and, and then hopefully get some two off of her and, and you'll be right. And so that's what, exactly what he does. He goes off, gets two, does a trade with Tatiana. She, uh, she'd borrowed some money as well. Tatiana also owes me 12, but she's now given Kevin two. Kevin's paid me back. He's fine with his 12. But now Tatiana has only eight, but she owes 12. And, and so she needs to wait for someone else on the island or Kevin to borrow again. But what happens every cycle, less and less actual currency ends up on this island and more and more debt ends up on this island. And if you zoom out, that island is exactly what Greece looks like. If Greeks mm -hmm. owes all of Europe's debt, it ha doesn't have enough money to pay it back. In fact, there isn't enough money to pay it back. And many people don't realize debt-based money is a fundamentally corrupt monetary system. And so you know, yeah, you can get all fun about the crypto mad gains and all the money you're making and, uh, or, or even if you're hoarding silver when it's gone up to $50 uh, in, in two, early 2000s, you know, be totally happy with those investments. But at the end of the day, you're missing the point. The point is asset-based money, money that's found in the ground. Gold is not lent into existence. It's found in the ground or silver and spent into existence. It's a rare number. It's found and spent into existence. Bitcoin is a rare number found and spent into existence. And these fundamental differences are something that many people bypass. Right. And one of the biggest culprits, of course, is governments because they just write a check to their central bank, whatever number they want. Yeah. Right. And then they get all this credits towards that, that they have to pay at back to the central bank at interest. Oh, by the way, the people in the government are the same people in the banks too. So it's basically they're lending and supporting each other. And then they can buy and do whatever they want in the country. Uh, but everybody's prices start going up and, uh, and labor gets further and further away, you know, as far as what they're paid. And so we're seeing huge divisions in societies across the globe where the wealthy are getting even more wealthy because they're playing the games with the government and uh average person is uh having a rougher rougher time so what do they do at the end they say hey we don't have any of this money that we can do things with let's trade in other ways let's trade in ways that support us and keeps our community alive because it's not all going to those centralized corporations and uh the walmarts and other places uh, instead, we're supporting local and we have a greater control and uh, of the quality that we receive. We know where it comes from. It's not tainted, you know. And so um, 
yeah, it's like how big can this debt bubble go until people say, hey, enough is my sense is that governments are going to start saying, hey, U.S., J Russia, we're not playing your game anymore. This is crazy. We're going to support our country um, and figure out a way to be self-sufficient, you know, but then they bring in the military. They don't like that. Right. So what's next, Tatiana? I don't what's know. the solution? I have More no music idea. That inspires, More inspires music inspires people to be great. Yes, I, I think I think the world needs more music. So I'm going to play you guys a new song. Unless Kevin, where can people catch up with you? Like if they want to hang, talk to you. I don't know what you're working on in terms of promoting oh. or whatever. But I just thought it was a neat story. Um, but is there a way that people can connect with you, learn more about you know your journey? I think just directly on Facebook, I'm fine. I don't, Kevin Innes. Um, I'm in, in Toronto, Canada. And um, things I'm doing also is getting better at nonviolent communication, which I also practiced in jail quite a bit. And uh, other forms of creating well-knit societies that where consensus decisions are how you move together with ethical means for ethical ends. Um, the whole pr concept of the, we're having a, you and I, Tatiana, had a dialogue in Toronto but mm -hmm. with, uh, what's the other, is it John? What's his, what's the other fellow's name? What's I his don't name? know. Oh, no, Sonny. No, who's with us? Oh, Sonny? Who's with us? No, right now. On our, oh, on Josh. Call. Josh. Josh, Josh. I thought I said John. Yeah. So we're having a um, trialogue of sorts. Dialogue, trialogue, octologue. Uh, Robert Podolsky talks about octologues in his book, Flourish. And it's fantastic. I like and a good I octologue. Yes. I don't know what an Not octolog is. <laughs> All right, great. Thanks, Kevin, very much for joining us. We'll see you soon, I hope. Thank you very Thank you. much and love your work, Kevin. Ciao, ciao. Hey, thank you. Thank awesome. you. Bye-bye. Okay, so uh, jo um, Josh, I was thinking about – Yeah, that was cool. Um, I was thinking about um, music and how I don't get to put things out, but a few weeks back, me and my friend Ari, we recorded – an old Cat Stevens song that I love. Everybody knows I love Cat Stevens. And we fi he finally finished mixing it. So yeah. uh, I never get to play music on the show. And uh, I'm going to do that do it. through this, I guess. Okay, cool. So hang on one second. We're going to do it super ghetto style by turning my microphone. And hopefully it won't sound like trash. But here it is, everybody. Enjoy. How can I tell you? Cat Stevens cover song by Tatiana Moroz. All right. How do you do this? See you, everyone. How can I tell you that I love you? I love you, but I can't think of right words to say. I long to tell you that I'm always thinking of you. I'm always thinking of you, but my words just go away. Just go away. It always ends up to one thing, honey, and I can't think of the right words to say. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wherever I am, boy, I am always walking with you. I'm always walking with you. But I look and you're not there. Whoever I'm with, I'm always, always talking to you. I'm always talking to you. And I'm sad that you can't hear. Sad that you can't hear. It always adds up to one thing, honey, when I look and you're not there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I need to know you, need to feel my arms around you. 
feel my arms surround you like a sea around a shore. Each night and day I pray and hope that I might find you and hope that I might find you because hearts can do no more can do no more it always adds up to one thing honey still I kneel upon the floor oh 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 I'm always thinking of you, but my words just blow away, just blow away. It always adds up to one thing, honey, and I can't think of right words to say. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Tatiana Morose, the one and only, the Liberty uh, <laughs> Queen. Thank you. I'll take that. That doesn't really make much sense, though, for oh, an anarchist yeah. Yeah, to no, enjoy that. But I am, I am Queen Tatiana on Twitter. So if y'all want to follow me there and uh, retweet that song, it's pinned. I got to repin it and put some other things. Oh, thanks, Kevin. Uh, so Kevin, Kevin liked the jam too. So that was fun. Yeah. Anywho. Um, all right. So next week, Zen cash party Monday night. If y'all want to come, you better write me a message. Maybe I'll invite you. Um, no, I think basically anybody from the Zen cash community can come. So it's not that exclusive, but anywho, um, yeah, I don't know. I'll see you in just a few days, Josh. Thanks yeah. Kevin. Once again, for coming on the show. Thanks Javi for running things on the back end. And, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't think we have a show next week, but we'll be back in a couple of weeks and oh, we've got some content Media. coming out. You know, awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I should mention my company. Everybody should should find out about my company, Crypto Media Hub. Yeah, uh, we yeah. can help your business. Uh, I feel like by saying like with our big mouths and I'm like, I don't know, it sounds like a little creepy. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. Like we're good. <laughs> you know, she might not be. <laughs> Be the best at selling our own business. Like the worst like, sales pitch ever. Uh, we, we actually used Tatiana back in the early days, and we got a I'm lot of I'm like of like red flames. Just woo! I swear to God, I'll do a better view job with this other, another time. No, and right. like, like, and thank you to all of our subscribers to the show. We we get so many subscribers every week, and and we forget to thank them all. So thank you very much. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit subscribe, hit that little bell, like us, do all that jazz. You know all the normal stuff. You're such a good promoter. Do you want to work for my company? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, cool. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you all uh, next week. And uh, oh, yeah, wait, aren't they supposed to write Dave if they want to sponsor the show? Since I've done such a good job selling, um, Dave over at PTC Media uh, can help you guys. Here it is uh, Dave at ptcmedia.org. Um, all right. <laughs> the whole end of the show is completely devolved. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you at, uh, we'll see you in New York. Bye. Adios, amigos. Un amigas.